Hi everyone, um, about a month and a half ago I released this little tool called Send MIDI that allows you to send MIDI over the command line uh, on Mac, Windows and Linux. And last night I released another tool called Receive MIDI that allows you to receive MIDI on the command line. Um, so a few musicians might wonder why would you want to use the command line to do anything related with MIDI. So I thought it would be useful to record this little walkthrough. It's just a, a brain dump of stuff that I'm doing on the command line. Maybe some tips and tricks um, about how to use that on macOS. People that are using Linux probably already know all of, all of this stuff. Uh, and on, on Windows, I'm sorry, but I, I don't use Windows, so um, I can't really help you there. Um, I can get something to compile and work on Windows, but practical use, um, that's not really my thing. Um, so on Mac, um, the way you install Send MIDI and Receive MIDI is to basically go to this site called GitHub that has also all the source code available for these tools. And if you go to slash gbevan, that is my sort of space there, uh, you'll see that Send MIDI and Receive MIDI are uh, at the first page that you see, and you can click on either one of those and then go to the releases panel. Um, and here you can download the binary. So let's just download the one for Mac OS, then go back to Receive MIDI, download also the one for Mac OS. And you see they download very quickly. Um, they're very small. So I, I can sort of open these, um, and there they are. Um, so you've got these two tools here that you can use from the command line. Now, how do you start the command line? So Mac ships with a tool called Terminal that gives you this window where you can type in text and commands. And to launch a terminal, one way of doing that is to you know, go to your finder, you know, click on the uh, background, to the Go menu, here the Utilities folder, and then inside utilities folders, you've, you've got terminal, you can double click that and it launches terminal and opens a ter terminal window. Um, now that is not how I do it uh, because I find this quite cumbersome and I find this cumbersome for launching any type of application. So let me quit this. Um, what I do is I use Spotlight's search to actually look for the name of an application and, and launch it like that. Um, so I've got this set up as command space. Um, so the way you do that is to go to system preferences. You go to keyboard, inside keyboard, you've got shortcuts. And then if you click on spotlight, you can see that I set up show spotlight search as command space uh, for the shortcut. I think by default, this might be control space. Um, I can't remember, but I've always used it as command space. Um, so that's how I set it up. Um, so if I type command space, you'll see this window pop up and I can type terminal, term basically. And it's going to, long, to complete it to terminal. Um, you can see there is another terminal that I also use called iTerm. I sort of prefer it, but macOS uh, built-in terminal became really good uh, in the latest releases. So it's really not necessary to install I iTerm. Um, so that's launch terminal. So I typed in term, it completed to terminal. I can press enter or return, and it's going to do the same thing. So if you see how fast this goes, this is much faster than going to uh, this utilities folder and double clicking it. Um, so now how do you install send MIDI and receive MIDI? So one thing to know is that there is a standard location on macOS where you can install command line tools that don't ship with the operating system. Um, so, and that is located uh, at the location on your hard drive that is slash user slash, so USR, which is a shorthand for user, slash local, it's local, your local computer, slash bin, which is shorthand for binary. Um, so that is where all the, you know, your personally installed executables for the command line should be installed. Um, so if you just type this, it's not going to work because it's going to try to execute it. It's saying, hey, this is a directory. I can't launch a directory. A directory is like a folder. It contains stuff. Um, so um, let's go to the downloads 
folder where the two downloads are that I just made. Um, and just a little tip, one of the things you can do is you can take one of the executables and drag it onto the terminal and macOS's terminal will automatically put in the full path, so the full location of that tool on your hard drive, and then you can press enter and it's going to execute it. Uh, you can see that if you don't provide any commands or options, send MIDI and receive MIDI will give you the documentation uh, so that you can actually uh, read how to use it. Um, command K clears, it's K, it's not C, but clears uh, your terminal. So if you want to get rid of what is on there, that is an easy and good way to do it. Um, so one thing we want to do is to copy send MIDI, so the executable, to user local bin. So you can type cp for copy space, then drag um, so the file that you unzipped on there, and then you can type user local bin. So it's not going to allow you to do that. Why doesn't it allow you to do that is it's because when you install something on your machine, you have to provide it the right privileges. This is one of the reasons why macOS uh, has traditionally, and Linux, been more secure than, than some other operating systems in that to install anything that is system-wide, you have to provide it always with uh, security credentials. Um, so you can, you can press the arrow key to go up to the previous command and then control A to go to the beginning of the line um, you, you could press you know, the arrow keys to go all the way to the beginning of the line. That's sort of cumbersome. Um, and then you can type in sudo, which is sort of shorthand for super user, so su, do. So do something with a super user on the, on the computer. Um, so when you do that and press enter, it's going to ask for your password, which you type in. And now it copied the send MIDI executable to slash user slash local slash bin. Um, and now you can do which, let's see, which, where, where uh, can the operating system find sent MIDI, which sent MIDI, and it's going to find it right there in slash user slash local slash bin. And now I can just type in send MIDI without this whole path, and the operating system is going to find it um, in the terminal. So command K to clear everything again. And I can do the same thing with um, receive MIDI. So sudo copy receive midi slash user slash oops slash user slash by the way you can do lo instead of local tab press a tab key so to have it uh, complete uh, automatically um, so it will look at what the actual folders and files are on your file system and by pressing tab um, it's going to check what the first letters are and try to complete it uh, until the end which is uh, quite a nice way to um, Know, to very quickly find the location on your hard drive on the terminal. Um, so let's copy receive MIDI also. Now you notice that I didn't have to put in my password again. Um, that is because sudo sort of has a timeout um, and for I think it's about 10 minutes, uh, this is configurable. It will keep its credentials and you don't have to put it in again, allowing, it, allowing you to do a series of super user commands uh, one after the other without always having to type in your password. On more secure systems, you might want to turn this off, but usually it's fine to have this sort of uh, this authorization being preserved for a couple of minutes. So now receive MIDI is also in user local bin, and I can type receive MIDI and have you know, the full command, uh, the full uh, documentation being printed out. So, um, Let's use, so let's clear this out. Um, I don't, let's, let's look at the terminal. So, um, I can type in send MIDI and type list. And now it's going to list all the MIDI devices that are connected to the system. And you can see here, I've got the instrument 128 connected. And I've got some other devices that are already set up, um, like the network section. And I don't even know what this USB MIDI device thing is. Um, Maybe someone else, something that I configured at one point, can't remember. Um, so, but first, I find it a little bit too long to type send MIDI. This is just a few too many characters. I would like it to be SM, so send MIDI, um, but that, that doesn't work. 
However, um, Bash, which is uh, sort of the environment that is run when the terminal opens, has a whole series of features built in to make your life easier. Um, so one of the things you can do is send up, set up aliases. So I can say um, alias sm equals send MIDI. And now when I type sm, it's going to be like send MIDI. So I can just type alias and it's going to show me what the alias, al what all the aliases are that you've set up on your system. Um, now the downside is when I open like a new terminal and I type alias, it's gone. So it's only active for the current environment that you're working in. Well, one way to do that is to actually say, put that into a configuration file. Um, so now we're going to editing a little bit of text. Um, and I recommend that you install uh, like a good text editor. And one of the free ones out there that is really good, it's called TextMate. You can get this from Macromate. Um, and so macromate.com, you can download it. It is open source even, I think, and it's or, or free. It's at least free, that's for sure. Um, and so once you've got that installed, um, you can actually go to TextMate to the preferences and install terminal support. And this puts a file called mate inside user slash local slash bin. And that allows you to very easily use text mate on the terminal. Um, so I've already done this. So mate, when I type it on the terminal, it's going to launch this uh, visual text editor uh, instead of having a text editor in the in the command line uh, there are a few of those but they're harder to use um, so there is this one file um, that is called dot profile so when you just a little bit of uh, background when you open up a new terminal by default it is going to open it up with the currently active directory, your home directory. So the command to know what your currently active directory is, is called pwd. And you can see it's slash user slash gbevin, which is my home directory. And then you can do ls to see what is in your home directory. And there is a series of files that are by default hidden. Um, and those are files with a dot before them. This is sort of a convention on Unix systems. Uh, but you can show them by doing ls, so ls from uh, list, dash a, and it's going to show you all sort of the hidden files. And there's a bunch of them. Um, so let's clear the terminal. And there is one file called dot profile. Um, so what I want to do is edit that file. So I'm using the, the uh, mate command, which I installed through uh, text mate. And I'm going to edit the dot profile. Uh, file, text file. So it's going to open it up. And here I want to say alias sm equals send MIDI. So when I save this now, and I have to open up a new terminal so that this 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 dot profile uh, file is automatically executed when um, bash launches, so your terminal launches, uh, it's going to execute what's in there. And if I now type alias, you're going to see that this alias exists. So I can type SM. So then anytime I open up the terminal, I do SM, it's now going to work. Um, so let's, let's do some more. So I've got alias SML equals send MIDI device instrument. So if I now open the terminal, oops. So I made a mistake. If, if you put spaces in the alias command, you actually have to put it within quotes. I uh, sort of forgot about that. So let's do that again. Terminal. So now I can do alias. You can see that both of them exist. And I can type SML. And I don't get the help file anymore because I gave it one command, which is instrument. Um, so let's do the same thing for receive MIDI. So um, I'm just copying this, so RM is going to be receive MIDI. Um, RML is going to be receive MIDI from the device the instrument. So let's quit the terminal again, uh, open it. And now if I do so receive MIDI the instrument RML, I can I can touch the instrument and you can see all the MIDI uh, information appear on the terminal. 
which is pretty cool. Um, so receive MIDI listens indefinitely until you interrupt it. And the standard way of interrupting a command on the terminal is to press the control key and C, the character C. So it's going to interrupt the current uh, um, executable that is running in the terminal. So these are standards. I know it's a lot, but these are standard things that you can use on all Unix machines, um, and at least on all Macs, if you're using Macs. And one, once you start you know, getting a little bit proficient with these, uh, uh, these concepts, it's going to make your life a lot easier if you want to make some uh, quick changes. So, um, one thing I want to change still though is, so in this alias, receive MIDI dev instrument, I want to put TS, which is short, shorthand for timestamp. So receive MIDI is able to put timestamps uh, before every MIDI message that it receives. And I kind of like that. So let's quit out of all of this. So I've got now terminal. And I've, if I now do receive MIDI instrument, you can see that it's putting timestamps in front of every MIDI command. So now we can use receive MIDI very easily for my device called the instrument. Um, so if you look at alias, you can see everything we set up. Um, you can use send MIDI also to send it to the instrument. Now this could be any synthesizer that you have or any controller that you have or even software that is running on your computer that is using virtual MIDI ports. You can set up all these commands very easily and if you want to quickly send something or monitor something, this is a very fast way of doing so. So for example, I want to see what is going on on the instrument. I type in term, so I do uh, command tab, type in term. I do receive MIDI from the instrument. There we go. It is all set up and it just took a few seconds. So once, once you're getting into the flow of uh, using the command line for this, um, you'll see that it's much, much faster than doing things with a, a GUI because you don't have to start clicking around, you don't have to uh, find your application, make sure that you configure it correctly, that it's got the right preferences. All of this will always behave exactly the same way. Since there are no preferences to be stored, it's always going to listen to an instrument. Um, most UI applications require you to actually set up the right MIDI device in the settings, and that might change from you know, time to time. Um, so this is a nice way of doing things, I think. So let's now use the send MIDI command. So I'm opening up the ter terminal, SM for send MIDI, and you can see that it's got a whole bunch of commands here. Um, one of them is to send uh, a MIDI message for node on and node off. Um, you can also send continuous controllers, RPNs, basically everything inside the MIDI 1.0 spec is supported here. Um, so I've, I've, I, we set up, I don't know if you remember the alias, we set up send MIDI instrument, and now what I want to do is uh, send a note on for note number 60 with velocity 64. Um, and instrument has this functionality that when you send it a note, it's going to light it up. So you can see that this is note number 64. Now, if I change on to off, you're going to see that the note turns off. Um, so this is sending it out by default on channel one. Um, which is what instrument MIDI channel one, which is what instrument is configured for now. Um, if I would change this to channel two, um, you can see channel two, it's not working because instrument is not listening to channel two. Um, so let me so do that again. I set the per split settings to channel two, and now channel two, and now it's going to light up. Um, so let's turn it off again. So that's, that's, that's nice, that's one thing you can do. So another thing that you could do is to actually, uh, so now I send it note messages to light up which notes correspond to uh, the note that it received. Um, one thing I can do also is to send MIDI to the instrument. And we've got a series of uh, MIDI CCs that you can use to reconfigure the instrument and then a whole series of uh, NRPNs that allow you to do that also. But the MIDI CCs, uh, are very uh, often used because they allow you to light any cell with any supported color. Um, and so these CCs are CC20, CC21, and CC22. CC20 is for the column, I, rem I think so, yeah, the column. CC21 is for the row, and CC22 is for the color that you want to set that cell to. So uh, send MIDI to the instrument, SML, CC20, I want to use row um, row 5, yes, CC21, for example, uh, sorry, column 5, CC21, row 0, CC22, number 1 is going to light it in red, I think, if I remember correctly. And so this 
is row zero, this is the first row. This is actually column zero. So column zero, one, two, three, four, five. And so it lifts this up. Let's try to light this in another color. So this is the same one as before. So now it's a, a dark blue. Um, I can change here. So this now is magenta. And I can send it to zero to turn it off again. Um, so that is one way of doing things. Um, now let's say that you actually want to do this a lot, that you've got this whole pattern that you set up with a whole series of CC messages where you light up stuff on the instrument or you configure your device. Uh, like for example, the make knows no coast has a whole bunch of uh, MIDI commands that you can set it. Um, yeah, many synthesizers do. Um, you can actually store this into a text file. So I could do mate. Um, and let's just copy this, this series here, uh, mate, um, and call this color, just a name that we call color, a file that we'll call color, mate color. And I'm copying these commands in here. And when I now do SML, oh, sorry, let's edit this again, because I put, I, I turned the color off, basically, I used color zero. So let's put it to color uh, one. So now I've got this file color and I can do SML color and it's going to light the same position. So it's going to read the commands from that file called color. Um, now let's copy that file color. So CP color to color off, for instance, and, and, and rename the first one to color on. Um, so color to color on. And now I can edit color off and put this to zero. And so now I can do SML color off. It's going to turn this one off. If I do SML color on, it's going to turn this one on. So already you can see that you could create this whole library of a series of MIDI commands that you frequently or infrequently use, actually that might even be more useful uh, when there is this whole thing that you figured out how to do with your MIDI device, uh, you read the manual for it and it's working now you want to capture it so that you can do it you know, in two months without having to go through this whole process again. You can just save this to a file. Um, I think that's pretty useful. Now one thing, you can take this one step further. Um, let's say that um, you want to create a command just like SML, so send MIDI for an instrument, so send MIDI is a command, you can create a script that automatically executes. Um, so let's change, so rename color on, let's rename this to color on.sh, so it's dot .sh is uh, indicating that it's a shell script, so it's going, it's supposed to be executed by bash, which is born again shell but you need to do more for it to actually be able to do that. So let's open that up. So this is a series of commands. Let's add Linstrument to this. So it's going to use a device Linstrument. And now there is this convention on Unix systems. Uh, it's called Hashbang, I think, uh, where you put uh, uh, the hash sign then with an exclamation point, and then you can type in slash user slash local slash bin send MIDI. So you put there the name of the command, the name of the command line utility that you want to use to execute this script with. So I'm saving this. And now I should be able to do this. There you go. So color on automatically turns on this cell and it's becoming its own command. Now, to be certain, I think that TextMate here automatically gave the execute permissions to this file because normally when you create a file, a shell file, uh, a script file like this, it is not executable. So you have to do, you've, you modify the file permissions. And there's a command here, change mod, um, and you do plus X, which is allow it to execute, and you provide, you put that on the file that you want this to, uh, to be attributed to. So Let's turn this off. So let's turn the, the execute permissions off. And if I would execute this again, it's going to say permission 
denied. So this is what would normally happen when you edit a file. I think the text made, so I just tried it before, I think the text made automatically set this um, execute permission on this shell script. So let's put it back. Um, now let's do the same thing for color off. So let's move color off to color off dot sh. Now edit it again. Um, uh, so device instrument. Oops, the instrument and hashbang again, uh, slash user slash local slash bin send MIDI. So and now I can use color off and this should turn this one off. There you go. It's turned the cell off and now I can do color on, turning it back on, color off, turning it back off. Um, so one thing you'd notice is that I put a, a dot slash before the command, which means execute this command from my currently active directory. So one thing I could do is um, I could do sudo, so super user do, move color, um, let's do all the color.sh. So you can put in a star, which means to the shell uh, environment, okay, complete this with everything you can find. Um, so everything that starts with color underscore O and ends with .sh is going to be uh, are going to be the files that I'm working with. So I want to move these to slash user slash local slash bin. So it's asking me for my password again because too much time elapsed uh, between now and the previous time. So there they are. Um, so what I can do now is of course color. Um, so if I autocomplete color, you can see I don't have to put in the, the uh, dot slash before anymore. It's just known to the whole system now and I can use this. And just to complete the cycle, you can do alias uh, co for color on equals color on dot sh, um, alor, alias um, cf maybe <laughs> for color off. And now I can now I can basically type co, and it's turning color on, cf it's turning the color off. So I know this has been a lot in half an hour, but if you realize what just happened is that. You basically created your whole two custom tools for you that execute, uh, that send MIDI uh, information to the device of your choice. Um, you save them on your system, and from this day onwards, there is a very easy command that you can type to do any complex MIDI task, and you don't have to figure it out anymore. It just works. Um, so I think it's a nice way of showing the power of the command line. Um, so that is send MIDI. So one thing you can do is um, use receive MIDI together with send MIDI. So we have receive MIDI for the instrument. You remember means that if I type on the instrument, well type <laughs> if I play on the instrument, it's going to appear um, on on the command line. So let me reconfigure the instrument to be uh, in in sort of MPE mode in note per channel mode. And you're going to see that it's actually going over multiple MIDI channels each time I touch down. Um, so one thing you can do now is let's let's launch Piano Tech. Um, actually, let's let's do this differently. So there's this tool called Baduel that automatically sets up a series of virtual MIDI ports. Um, so let's delete this. So it's going to be connected to my uh, default audio output. What I'm going to do here is open the MIDI device, input, um, so I want Baduel, the virtual Baduel MIDI port that Baduel creates on a Mac. Uh, I don't think it does on Windows because the Mac OS has this uh, functionality to create virtual MIDI ports very easily. And so let's create the instrument also. And now in MIDI devices, I'm going to launch Piano Tech. Um, so now I'm going to connect both. So this is sort of like a Max MSP uh, type of tool. Um, so what happens now is the instrument MIDI input and Baidual MIDI input both go to Piano Tech and then the audio output of Piano Tech goes to my default speakers. So if I, if I play, it's now going to make sound. So let's look at this here. Um, let's do remove, let's do uh, receive MIDI from the instrument again. 
and you see that all this information corresponds if you can <laughs> if you can watch very quickly um, it corresponds to what I just played um, so what one nice thing you can do is let's say that I, I'm only interested in the note messages so receive MIDI the instrument note so all the rest is now filtered out or I might only be interested in, in the pitch bends um, so this is an easy way to quickly debug what is going on. If you see, hey, why, why is um, this sounding a particular way? Is, is my device actually working? Is it actually sending out MIDI notes? Um, so this is a very easy way to do that. Um, so one of the things you can do now is, for example, receive MIDI to an instrument, uh, from the instrument. And there, the command line utilities uh, on Unix allow you to um, to store there are two ways of outputting text. So you saw um, when this is running, text appear on the terminal window um, and there is a standard output into which uh, e every command line tool writes the output. Um, there is also a standard output for setting the error messages. So these are split up in two different ways. Um, so the standard output for this kind of monitoring, you can very easily write this to a text file um, uh, through through the power of streams. So receive MIDI from the instrument, and if I put this greater than sign, and I'm going to write this to a text file. So let's out. So now you're not going to see anything anymore. But if I interrupt this command and I use mate to look at the text file that was just created, you can see everything that was just m uh, received by receive MIDI. Now, one of the nice things here is that you obviously you can, you can save it, but you can also edit it. It's just a text file. And because I set up receive RML as an alias, remember alias, alias RML here is receive MIDI from the device instrument with a timestamp. It put timestamps in front of it. And so one thing I can do now is, so send MIDI, not send MIDI instrument, send MIDI to which device I want to send into Baidu one. And I'm going to read this from out, which is the file that I just saved. And now it's reading my amazing performance uh, from that file that was just saved. Um, with all you know, the articulations, basically every MIDI information that was saved in that file, because the timestamps are there. Um, so that's one way you can use this. Let's now imagine, um, so let's do this differently. Um, so what you can see here in Badul is that both MIDI devices are connected to Piano Tech. Um, let's now imagine that um, you want to receive MIDI from one device, so this is the instrument, and you want to send it to another device without going through this graphi graphical environment. So let's remove this connection here. So I'm sort of simulating what could be happening in, in, in any kind of you know, hardware connection scenario. Um, so what I want to do is receive MIDI from the instrument. The problem here is I've got the timestamp, so I'm not going to do this. Uh, so re receive MIDI from device the instrument. And I'm going to use this other uh, shell functionality that is ca called pipes, meaning it's taking the output of one command and it's going to send it to the next command. So I'm piping this to send MIDI and I want to send MIDI to the device called Baidual one And there's also a standard um, convention which sent MIDI supports on, 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 on Unix command line tools. Well, many of them support this. If you put dash dash at the end, instead of uh, executing its command and just uh, quitting, it's going to wait to receive information on the standard input. So in this case, um, receive MIDI is uh, going to send this to the standard input. So, so it's the output of receive MIDI is going to be sent to the input of send MIDI. So in this case, if I play the instrument, it's actually automatically being sent to Baidu here. So if I open up a monitor, a MIDI monitor here inside Baidu, you see that when I play the instrument, 
this all arrives here. So it allows you to redirect um, MIDI very easily from one device to another, or to redirect only certain messages. Let's say that I want to receive MIDI from a device or instrument. So by the way, I just realized by making all this stuff up on the go that I overrode a command called RM, which is a way to delete files. And I, I you know, created an alias, um, and it's not operating as receive MIDI, which is fine for this use case. So, but RM is probably not a good alias for receive MIDI, um, just so that you know, because you might get used to it and then type RM and you're actually deleting stuff. So, so let's say that I only want to receive the note messages from the instrument and send those onwards to Baidu. So let, let's, let's do it like before again. So we've got this MIDI monitor. You can see that you know, if I type now, if I play now, there's a lot of articulation. Let's clear this buffer. Um, Control C to uh, stop the execution. And now I only want to send note messages. So this is an easy way to filter out MIDI and to send it elsewhere um, in real time. Um, so that is it, I think. Um, there's a whole bunch of other things that you can do with receive MIDI. Um, it's, it is even able to forward all MIDI messages, including SysX, including MIDI clock. Um, um, and Send MIDI is able to do that also. It's got a few other nice tricks up, on, up its sleeve in that you can, for example, automatically generate MIDI clock based uh, on a particular BPM. Um, it also supports MPE, like, which is an um, upcoming st MIDI standard. Um, so the way it's currently specified in the draft, it allows you to configure a device for MPE. It also allows you send me to very easily send out a series of CC messages to uh, uh, set up or send out RPN and NRPN commands. Um, so it's, it, it's quite a few things. So I hope this was useful. Um, it's just a brain dump, um, maybe a bit too much, maybe a bit too fast, but maybe someone uh, finds this useful. And um, you know, happy, happy MIDI command lining, I'd say, or or whatever. <laughs> Bye.